you're at the right place. This is Cigar Time. <laughs> Welcome back. What? what, what? Well, you're always saying it's the same old, same old. Why <laughs> change it up a little I bit? I like that one that better, nice. actually. Yeah, you're, like in right that one you're in the right spot. You're in the right spot. And to those 40,000 people watching at home and the tens of thousands more on YouTube and our Facebook site and our website, which our website, our website, DCCigars.com. That's double C. You really got to leave them com. hanging? Yeah. yeah, we're yeah. docking. They, yeah. Just, dock look, them. I don't dock. even, I don't dock. even dock notice what? you're here. <laughs> off the show. It's Watson. It's Doc Watson. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to be joined again by Juan Lopez, the national sales director and major domo of Gurkha Cigars, and his esteemed right hand man, Jolly Doc Watson. The jolly Doc. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't call him Chuck. Don't call him Chuck. He gets this. No jolly. Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> or round two of our Gurkha <laughs> experience. And uh, it was most informative last week, and I we love really this. appreciate yes. you guys Absolutely. coming back. And, and, and uh, we, we learned a lot, and I think we're going to learn a lot more today as well. Uh, but we should probably light up our cigar, which today we are smoking. We are smoking the Havana Blend. This is very, very Cubanesque-like. I just want to point that out. So you're in for a real treat smoking one of these. The wrapper is San Andreas, the binder. It says they won't tell us. You can read that. <laughs> and the filler is Nicaraguan. <laughs> the sizes you put, yep. Uh-huh. Yeah? They have sizes. They have sizes. <laughs> well, I'm smoking the, uh... <laughs> the, newly, the newly introduced. you got to make you think on your feet here. I'm smoking the newly introduced, um, I guess you would call this a Lancero. Yes, mm -hmm. With a pigtail, I actually uh, took my pigtail off. Twist and pop. A nice little twist and pop, nice little hole it makes. Oh, my God. I do that every time. You do. The, you fall right in there. I do. The, oh, God, you don't even want to know what I did the last time. Don't emphasize it. You're right. I won't. The, right. <laughs> the taste on this is spice earth nuts with a milk chocolatey wrapper. Dang. So, I know, right? Mm, you want to eat it, right? <laughs> and it's like a medium body. Yep. This, is, this is a definitely. medium body. So definitely. this is definitely for everyone. Absolutely. And it's so, box press. So, Wani, what's the origin of this cigar? So, so that, that cigar, so to add to what we were talking about last week, so when we change our ways of you're going with one factory and now we're at multiple factories, the one thing that uh, I, like, I like to tell the, the, the audience and, and the consumers and, and, and the uh, retailers, our, our, our partners, uh, is that we're cigar merchants. So you have Fuente, you have Padrones. Those guys are cigar manufacturers. They have their own factories. What we do is we go into some of the better growers in Nicaragua, uh, which most of you guys know their names. Um, I'm not gonna disclose, just because I'm not gonna disclose. Um, and we secure tobacco. Uh -huh. And we, we then take it to, a, to a, two small factories that we work with in the, in the, in the region, and they we literally take over the factories. And uh, the one factory that we make most of the East India uh, line on um, went from making 30,000 cigars for, for us to, uh, three years ago, to this year we we'll do two and a half million sticks. Wow. Wow. That's pretty impressive. That is a huge um, jump. The, so on the on the uh, on the Havana blend, the, my my thought was when I was helping blend because I'm part of the blending team in Nicaragua, is I'm a Padron smoker. It, it's not a secret. That when I don't smoke Gurkhas, I smoke Padron Universal 64 Exclusivo Maduro. That's, that's oh my God, that's mine. That's, that's that is my number that, one. We raised that. Was my number one. With favorite. all due respect, that is yes. the best cigar. I'm made. sorry. I've been smoking that cigar for ten years, and it tastes exactly exactly, exactly, exactly every same. time I smoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other night, Charlie and I were in Maryland, mm -hmm. and I lost a bet, and it was a good loss because I, I got to buy a box of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was, so it's all good, but... And he so was wanted, generous, he gave me two. <laughs> I did give two. <laughs> I'm so lucky, I would have only given you one. Uh, <laughs> Rob would have given you half of one. Yeah, half. So the idea was, we wanted something, we wanted something box for us, <laughs> we wanted something that's, that's got that medium body, everyone could smoke, a lot of flavor, a lot of nuttiness, a lot of sweetness, and that's what you get from the cigar. So it's San Andres. You got uh, the the binders Nicaragua from from Jalapa, the fillers Esteli Condega and Jalapa. So you got all Nicaraguan tobacco in there. Uh, again, medium body, ton of flavor, and then the, the further you go into the cigar, you start picking up that nuttiness, that earthiness. Uh, you pick up a little bit hint of sweetness to it as well. Uh, it's become our best-selling cigar on the East India side of the business. Uh, again, very reasonably priced from, from $6.99 to $9.99, which yeah. is the sweet spot the uh, right. for everyone. Yep. And uh, so we're very proud of this release. We released <coughs> it uh, last year, and it's taken off. Yeah, I mean, it's right. a home run. Yeah. It's yeah. a home run for us. We touched on it a little bit on last week's program. You mentioned how the, at the early origins of the company, they were 
very much uh, involved with the mail order and the internet business and such. And uh, obviously, we as brick and mortar dealers, and obviously throughout the country, the brick and mortar dealers, it was kind of like a little revolt, I guess you would call it, mm -hmm. because the cigars you made for the mail order company were usually contract cigars. Uh, I'm not going to say they were of less quality, but they were they were cigars made for a price, and they were sold for that extremely low price. And then somewhere a few years back, like you described, mm -hmm. you, uh, you you realize that there's a whole world of brick and mortar stores out there that are good, capable stores, and and you started to pull back on the internet business, and you started emphasizing different packaging, better blends. I'll, I'll just stick my neck out and say better blends to sell strictly in the brick and mortar stores. And that's when we got re-engaged, because for a while there, you know, seeing the low prices that were offered out and, and, and not trying to compete in that arena, uh, we sort of shunned Gurkha for a long time. And it's through your efforts, the both of you, that we've gotten re-engaged with Gurkha, and I'm happy we did. Thank you. Thank you. Because, you know, I understood the business reasons behind the decisions that were made years ago, and, you know, I appreciated the fact that you did what you needed to do, and I get that. But, again, as a brick-and-mortar store, we have to maintain margin. We need to make a profit to keep the stores open, sure. keep the lounges going, <laughs> keep the free coffee. Remember, every day is free coffee day, every cigar is cigar. You don't have to wait till National Coffee Day. It's every day it's cigar is cigar. And, and we're very pleased that you, you, you managed this turnaround in pretty good timing, I might add. And uh, we're yeah. happy, like I say, to be re-engaged with Gurkha. So uh, my uh, hat's off to both of you. Thank, Thank you. So what Art's trying to say is you can only get the cigars that we smoke here in our store. Absolutely right. Oh, no, no, you can get them in other brick and mortar. Oh, other stores. <laughs> yeah. In brick and mortar, you know sorry. That. You knew that. But, but, every, but everyone knows, if you follow the show, this, this gentleman here rules the land. So uh, I mean, if you can find it, if you can't find it here, you can't find it anywhere. He is so. affectionately known throughout the industry as King Arthur. Oh Lord, he is. Uh, Wait, you know other stores and stuff like that. Why don't you, right. Charlie, yeah, Charlie, 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 Charlie? Why don't you warn me? Take out the crown. The crown. Take out the crown. 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 Well, just what they by um, touching you know, on what you were I, talking, I'm sorry. Well, with Gurkha, I would prefer to be called Sahib. Sahib. <laughs> Sahib it is. <laughs> Thank you for, I think, the compliment. <laughs> I'm especially for that guy. I'm hey, there's no, hey, it's always good to be king. It's always, it's always good, always good, good to be king. <laughs> but remember, behind a, good, behind, behind a good king, there's always a queen. So, queen, you were saying something? Oh, Oh, oh my god. I would put her out front. He's got to stay. What a like segue. I would put her right stay. out front. You can never you, leave. You can compliment him. He won't get a big head. But her, she won't fit out the door. I won't fit out the door. I'll just bend it over. Yeah, that's hey, right. Easy now. In that outfit, don't bend over too far. Right? Try not to. Um, well, you were touching on um, how they reintroduced the blend again. And so they came up with this uh, four pack mm -hmm. to put together, um, which is 1995. And you can get pretty much. Um, it has the the newer the newer ones that they're they're, they're um, presenting. So you have the Ghost, the uh, Havana, you have the two uh, World Challenges, one in a Connecticut and a Maduro. So um, it allows you, if you're not familiar with their brand, or if you are but you haven't had these newer ones, that you can come and you can try them for a great for a great bargain. About half the price. Yeah, yeah. half the price. So um, and they're humidified. Yes, a humidified bag. These are in all of our uh, ten stores. Soon uh, soon to be to be I was going to see that. Oh, I'm soon sorry. To be I didn't step on your <laughs> That's okay. Um, and strictly only here at Cigar Cigar. So this is exclusive to us. Yes? That is yes. 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 exclusive to us. Um, real quick, I just want to touch on the, um, we did talk about the Ghost already and um, the Havana right now. So I just want to touch on the other two, the Gurkha Royal Challenge, um, which a lot of customers are liking this just out of the pack. Yeah, they, they smoke that's it in this pack model. and then they go and they're buying it off the shelf. So that's great. Um, 
The uh, Connecticut is a mild to medium. It was rated a 91 in Cigar Aficionado. The wrapper is Ecuadorian Connecticut. The binder is a Honduran Habano. And the filler is Nicaraguan and Dominican. And the taste profile is vanilla and some nutty overtones. Great cigar. And the uh, Maduro, which is my favorite, is medium to full. It has a broadleaf uh, Maduro wrapper. The binder is a Honduran Habano. And the filler is Nicaraguan and Dominican. And um, it's earthy, flavorful, and it's very sweet from the wrapper. You can really taste that on your lips. So, excellent. Very well done. Excellent package. Do we go you. around and give our initial impressions? Yeah. Um, I get a, I get like a charred meat flavor right up front. Uh, oh, we're done what do you mean? I like it. Charred, charred, charred meat. meat. Yeah. Who doesn't like charred meat? Yeah. Yeah. Charred Love charred meat. It's meat. <laughs> you guys taste it too tasty. You guys are all right. Is that like dead bovine on a plate? Yes. <laughs> yes. Let, never, him, let him talk. Never had burnt tips? Yeah. I like that's that. charred meat. Like burnt you are right. saying tips with a P. Yes. Okay. I could have sworn it. Yes. Okay. And I never do mind. get the... Uh, uh, Juan mentioned the, like a, a milk chocolatey, af like a finished or aftertaste. It's very pronounced. It's really, really nice. Milk chocolatey wrapper. See? Correct me one more time. <laughs> but, so I you give it talk. a time? No, no, we're not there yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you definitely can taste the uh, milk chocolate wrapper. Um, I can definitely get the, uh, I get like toasted nuts in here. Um, a hint of spice, um, very earthy, very Cuban nuts like. I, I, I love it. And you're not smoking a Lancero. Yes. Is that your favorite size? As to smoke. Rob? Stop. I'm detecting some innuendo going on here. I'm uncomfortable with. Try following. <laughs> try yeah. following that. Yeah, up. Uh, I don't get any milk chocolate yet. Uh, I do get a, a, a toasty, almost like a barky taste from it. Um, barky, barky. <laughs> Really? I'm sorry, cameraman. I didn't mean to laugh like that. Have you been getting Paul's into the ears cooking are as, you, as you laugh? It's ridiculous. Um, it's Bark. very it's smooth. Bark. It's incredibly smooth. So I'm not getting any aftertaste. Usually, when you t smoke a barky cigar, you get yes, that. You get right. You get a, a bad taste on, on your on your tongue. To There's no aftertaste on this. It was very nice on that tongue. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Well, as for me, very smooth, very mild to medium smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, it coats the tongue with a very pleasant taste sensation. Mm -hmm. Even on the retro hail, very smooth through the nose, and it's an outstanding cigar, and I just love the size. It's a shame, when I was a younger man, back in the last century, uh, this size, whether it be a Lancero or a Lonsdale, were very, very popular sizes. And unfortunately, with the cigar boom and all the new brands that have come out in the last 20 years. And everybody wants bigger. Yeah, everybody wants bigger, longer, fatter. They have fatter. to smoke bigger the way they smoke them, though. I mean, you have to know how to smoke one of those cigars. That's true. So yeah. You can't just point. pick one up and smoke it like a, a Gordo or a yeah. Toro. But if you, you speak, it. if you speak to anybody in the cigar yeah. industry, yeah. by and large, this size is their favorite size. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can go into graphic detail why, but we'll save that for another time, and we'll let Paul in the field describe that. But uh, those sizes are mostly smoked in Europe. Yep. Yes, yeah, very sizes. much so. Yeah, like five and, five and a half by forty-six yeah. is very popular yeah. in Europe. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. The uh, yeah. the Panatella, the, the Lancero. Yeah, very popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the Monte Number no. Four is like a Panatella? Oh, I love popular. that. That's oh, like the most popular the Cuban, cigar. The Cuban, the Cuban one. Oh, I love that size. I love that. That's a good afternoon, nice, easy cigar to smoke. Uh, but it, it, it's funny, and maybe you can expound on this a bit. Uh, in my travels recently in Europe, uh, I'm finding more and more and more American brands. Years ago, you'd, you'd strictly only find, you know, Cuban cigars, or occasionally maybe a little Davidoff display. A lot of, the, you yeah. know, a lot of the Monopoly countries support that. But in my last travel, especially in Eastern Europe, where I was. A lot of American brands over there. They're not really American brands. Well, the, they're they're non-Cuban. They're non-Cuban, right. non-Cuban. Because there's a lot of cigars that aren't sold in this country that aren't Cuban that are also sold in Europe and other that's places. A good, that's a good point, Barky. Mm -hmm. Barky. Like really? <laughs> now, does Gurkha well, have a footprint? Yeah, actually, page? actually, so so I was having a conversation with with uh, some of the guys outside in the in the, in the shop earlier, and, and they're saying international, international, and what's happening in the international business. At the end of the day, when you have something all the time, it's the same thing all the time, it gets boring. 
<laughs> and unfortunately, the consistency on the Cuban cigars oh, have dipped, especially the last six, seven, eight years. Uh, and so, so us as manufacturers in Nicaragua and Dominican, some guys in Honduras, we're taking that opportunity to pounce on it and introduce our flavor profile <clears throat> at a better price point, better quality, more mm -hmm. consistent quality. And we literally gone, I mean, we were non-existent internationally two years ago. Uh, in the last two years, we're now in 27 different countries. Right. We're very, very strong. We've gone from like zero to a few million. And we still, and we're still little by little making lead way in that market. Mm -hmm. There's other companies that are that are in this industry, in our side of the industry, in the American company, like you're right, saying, right. Uh, that got there first. So it's going to be a little bit harder work for us, but we have a great guy on the ground. His name is Frank the Cock. He's, uh, he used to work for a CAO. Yes, yeah, that's his last name, yes. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. Barky, okay. like the chicken. <laughs> like the chicken. <laughs> but uh, but he, does a, he does a phenomenal job for us. He, he used to work for CAO for a long time. Um, Gary Himes brought him on board. Right. And he's still on board with us, and he's done a fantastic job along with uh, Christina Santana, which is his assistant out of our office. They've done crazy, crazy business. I mean, 27 countries in two years. Wow. That yeah, takes a lot of work and a lot of, and a lot of planning. It's a lot um, harder. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, a, lot of, it's harder. a lot of planning because you have to remember, th these guys are not going to take 50 boxes. they got to take a minimum yeah, of a couple hundred boxes. Right. And it's got to go in in the same container with some stuff the Perdomo might have, right, some stuff right, the Oliva right. might have, and so on and so on. So, I mean, when these guys buy, they buy big. So they've done a hell of a job out in Europe to, to get our, our flavor profiles out there because we are different. We are different. We're better. The blends the speak for line. themselves. Absolutely. That's what I've always said. You know? Absolutely. Well, plus, to do business in Europe or Asia, uh, it's a lot more difficult than just fielding a sales force in this country and knocking on doors. I mean, a lot of countries have monopolies. Mm -hmm. You have to sell to the cigar monopoly. Or you need agents on the Yeah, crowd. it's strictly, it's strictly, it's you, 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 you cannot sell door to door. Mm -hmm. it's, it's through distributors, and those guys are all fighting for the same brands. Right. right. And then if you get in the, on the ground floor, some of the smaller guys, mm -hmm. those guys are going to push your brand more than anything. So what happens with them is, so they're pushing my product, we're kicking butt with it. What's going to happen? Other guys come in and start asking for their distribution. Ah. So we're actually telling them, hey, listen, by the way, you're welcome by us getting you into mm -hmm. right. some other some other guys that, that are now succeeding in the European market. Right. Because right. you know we got the, the foot in the door kind of thing, so it's great. They're doing a hell of a job. I think Europe, Europe uh, needed to expand their palate. Uh, that's the bottom line. Yeah, I mean, you're it's doing a good like, job. Yeah. And uh, and listen, we're making Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic, and, and some guys in Honduras are making great, great cigars. Oh, no question about bottom it. Bottom line, I mean, it, the, the fair profiles are there. A lot of the cigars nowadays. I remember when our you and I have been around forever, and so have you. <laughs> so you, I, well, what, be, before before his other career as an actor, I just wanted to add that in there. Before his career as an actor, a TV star. Thank you. So so what's happened is, eight nine years ago, you got a lot of crappy cigars. Oh, uh, crappy, crappy cigars. Yeah, they already said that. Right? Okay, a lot of crappy cigars. You go into the humidor, humidors right now in this day and age. In the last three years, it's very hard to find a real bad cigar. Pretty much everyone has to be on point. If not. You go to cigar heaven, you go away. Oh, and it's a time for smokers, no question. Absolutely, about it. yeah, yeah, definitely. And a lot of, uh, you know, with the pending act of the FDA, and depending on how they move things and do things, uh, there could be a lot fewer manufacturers out there, a lot fewer That's distributors true. out there. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious the feds want to police less manufacturers or distributors, and obviously less retail stores makes their job a lot easier. I mean, we're under attack, and. and no matter how much we fight back, you know, we're, we're fighting off the thousand-pound gorilla. Absolutely. And, and we don't have a, a lot of political clout. You know, there's a big difference. Uh, I, I was formerly in the firearms business many eons ago, and we had the NRA. And unfortunately, we don't have that big of a force behind us. I mean, the CRA and the IPCPR and the TAA and the CAA, you know, they're not always on the same page, and we just don't have the clout in Washington. I wish we did, and they're, they're fighting a, a mighty battle, and they're, they're doing a great job pushing that boulder uphill, all of them, and especially the CRA with Glenn Loop. I mean, these totally people right. are doing a miraculous job, but it, it is an uphill struggle. Totally. It is an uphill struggle because, you know, when two politicians are running for office, the guy who's pro-smoking and the guy who's anti-smoking, you can do the math, the anti-smoking guy is, is, or gal is going to get a, a lot more of the vote the percentage because they're, they're, the amount of people who smoke in this country anymore 
it's hovering around 20%, mm -hmm. and the ones that are ambivalent may be another 10 or 20%. So you've got 60 or 70% of the people that really are not in favor of smoking, not in favor of tobacco. So, you know, fight for your rights. I mean, this is something that, that is, is, tobacco's been around forever. This country was built but on the I back know, of tobacco. I know, I was going to say, and, and, yeah. and it's, it's people's livelihood, you know, it's people's, their jobs and their passion and what, yeah. they, you know, what they live for, so. Well, I think I, we I need know, to, so go ahead. Yeah. And to, and to add what, what you're saying is, what people don't understand is very simple. It's, it just doesn't hurt the hundreds of thousands here is the millions yes. in Nicaragua, in Honduras, oh, yeah. Dominican Republic. Those these uh, just cities built on tobacco, like Virginia was, like yes. North Carolina was. Right, yeah. right, you know, exactly. I mean, it's, Pennsylvania, yeah. you know, Connecticut. Yeah. You know, yeah. back in the day. So, so the politicians don't see that very short sighted. So they they see here now politically correct. Right. They stay the the course of being correct, being you know hands off. Everybody gets a trophy. Although it yeah. should be no, it should be first place getting a trophy. Everybody else gets a ribbon. Don't yeah. get me started. You know? yeah. So, so that's just yeah. me. Yeah. But I mean, we are when trying to have this conversation. Yeah. When yeah. I was in the Dominican <coughs> Republic, I mean, the majority of them they work in the, you know in the different fields yep. in the factories. Mm -hmm. and that's what they do. Well, it's another, it's, and it's another thing that, that people don't understand. It, it takes a, a couple hundred hands. Yeah. For this cigar to be brought to your hands. Yeah. Sure. Just Everybody should reason. take a tour through a Central American cigar, oh my goodness. Uh, cigar yeah. manufacturer. You don't know cigars until you took a tour. So you see yeah. the fields yeah. and you see yes. the factories. It's an yes. amazing process how many hands actually touch the tobacco. Uh -huh. So briefly, tell us what's next for Gurkha? What's coming up? Uh, what's coming up? So what's coming up is going to be a few events that we're, that we're going to be uh, doing more aggressively, obviously here at Cigar Cigar, you know, nice. getting, educating the customer right. back on the Gurkha. You know, Charlie Doc Watson will be here to do that on a regular basis. Um, where we, we, we feel that we're coming out with, with the new on the seller reserve, which you don't carry here yet, we will. Just, uh, <laughs> which is one of our top yeah. sellers, okay? Um, we're coming out with a platinum cigar uh, made in Nicaragua, which I, which I helped to blend, which I think is fantastic. We already sold out the first run of 60,000 wow. cigars wow. at the show, which is great. Uh, so that's coming up. Uh, moving forward, um, we're, we're so happy with what we're offering right now that we just want to fine tune everything. That's so any, That's anything, smart. anything that comes out now from us is going to be a small line, line extension. It's going to be a, a limited edition of mm -hmm. something that's already working pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to. We found our niche in the marketplace. That right now it's like, let's make A B C D, A plus B plus C plus that's D plus. Right. So that's the plan because you know the humidor stay the same size, but everyone keeps coming out with new cigars every single year. But unfortunately, yep. in our, in our well, in, but in our industry, and you guys could, could attest to this. Unlike back in the old days, which the guy would walk in and say, where's my Jolie de Monterey, where's my Fuente, where's this, where's that? The guy stuck to the same thing. Now you guys got come in, guys coming in asking, oh, what's, what's new? new? Yeah, every day. Yeah. Every day. There's so, no brand loyalty anymore. No, no not no, much. Zero. No. And you know what? And I, and I put it's it very on, and, no, and, and, a lot, and a lot, yeah, and a lot of that I put, I put on ourselves. Uh, we've given, we've given, which is a good thing, we've given the consumer so much access to us, right. which is great. I mean, I, I, always, yeah. I always put to say this. I remember Colitos Fuente back in the day never traveled anywhere. Now he's yeah. traveling like a madman. Yeah. Lito Fuente never traveled. Now he travels. You know why? Because we, we want to do that. But when was the last time you saw Ralph Lauren uh, at a Macy's get, hand, hand, shaking your hand for buying a, a hundred dollar polo shirt? Right. It doesn't happen. So mm -hmm. it goes back to what we are, what this industry is. It's a, it's a brotherhood. It's a small circle. We want you guys to be close to us. We do. But we also want you guys to get educated on the product. And the only way you get educated on the product is not always what you read online. Online is it's, it's an opinion. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the horse's mouth, the guy that blends the cigar, the guy that puts his money into the, into the right. marketing, the right. guy that, that's actually full-blown, all, all chips in, uh, getting, getting the cigar to you, not just these guys, the millions of bloggers that have their opinions, which, listen, some are great, some are not. I, I just feel that if you want your own opinion, come to the cigar shop, smoke the cigar, and then build your own oh, opinion, form your own opinion. So, God, have, best we, way, yeah. have, we, uh, <coughs> have we exhausted our events? Or? No, oh, no. Okay. Actually, tomorrow... Um, <coughs> Charlie's going to be in Lan uh, we got in Lancaster from 12 to 3, and then over to Westchester from 5 to 8. And we're going to do a buy three, get one free special. Uh, Thursday, uh, he's going to be in Fraser from 12 to 3, and Ludwig's 4 to 7. And then this Friday, right here in Horsham, from 12 to 3, and then Colmar from 5 to 8. Cool. It's time to review and, and rate. And guys, just to step oh, in there, it's a great time for you guys to come out and, and speak to me if you're unfamiliar with the product. You haven't tried any of the brick and mortar brands that are exclusive to the brick and mortar shops. Uh, great time to come out and get educated.
try the brands, see if you like them, you know, find out more from us than, as Juan was saying, online. Okay. We got a whole bag of education. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, very consistent all the way through, that, that milk chocolatey and that charred beef. I didn't get much barky in it. Um, very, are we rating it right now? Yeah, you got to rate it. We're running out of time. I'll give this a nine. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. It's true to exactly what it, you know what the profile says. <clears throat> um, my favorite size, and it's a box press, so this might be my next. Might be that's your favorite one of my size. Number one Lancero. to smoke. This might become one of my number one favorites. So I'm going. I'm going with a, a nine. What's the price point? That eight bucks. Nine point five. Very good, Rob. Uh, I really like the cigar. Uh, this is my favorite cigar you guys make. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, you were saying earlier about the um, Padron Exclusivo. This is the closest every, cigar yeah, to the ex yeah. Exclusivo. I, did, I get, through the retro hail, I get that milk chocolatey taste. And I get, I still get a barky taste. I don't care what you guys say. <laughs> Shut up. And the wrapper is nice and it's, silky. It's <laughs> very it. nice. It's, it's it. very close to the Exclusivo, which is Thank my all-time favorite Ed, cigar. Before you uh, I give this a... I don't want to agree with T, so I give it a nine six five. Hey, wow. out of point. For you Padron smokers out there, what was the price on that again? Eight dollars. All right, so everyday smoke. There you go. Yeah, it's a very affordable cigar. Yes, it is. This is a very. This reminds me of the old Hoyo de Monterey Cuban taste, almost like a milkshake, which I really, really love. Those of you who've heard me in years gone by and know me know how much I really used to enjoy that old Cuban Hoyo de Monterey, especially in a double Corona presentation. Uh, it's a great cigar. It's great on the retro hail, coats the tongue with a nice, sweet, complex taste. Uh, the price is right there, right at the sweet spot. Uh, I'm going to go 975. I nice. really do nice. like this. I, I of course, it's love really this size. Cigar. So I can smoke this size all day long. Yeah. Sure. That size, yeah, it's a perfect yeah. size. It's, it's awesome. So as we come to the end of another show, not again. what's that? Not again. Yeah, well, I we like them. Few, we have a few seconds. Well, we'll, get, like them we'll get them back. We'll get them back. We're just selling off cigars. They'll want to come back Absolutely. and take the nice so, care of us. And we'll, we won't die and again, care. guys, thank you, thank you guys so much for having oh, us. Oh, thank you. Really for coming. appreciate it. You guys are thank fantastic, you. great people. And uh, and to all the uh, to all the consumers out there, that support Cigar Cigar. You guys are in great hands with the staff. The owner, the actor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye, bye, guys. For now. Ciao for now, everybody. Happy Thank holidays. You very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Life's too short to say ciao for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I appreciate that, man. Thanks. The actor. So now you know what's going to happen. Gonna yeah. in. Where's the actor? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a scoop. He acts like a cigar smoker. <coughs> oh, what? He okay. acts like a cigar smoker. Oh, shut up. This is Glenn Loop, Executive Director at Cigar Rights of America, a grassroots movement designed and in existence to defend your ability to enjoy premium handmade cigars. But like no other time in history, this passion of ours is under attack. It's under attack in your city hall, in your state capitol, and in the halls of Congress of Washington, D.C. Right now, the Food and Drug Administration is proposing to regulate this passion that we all share like never before in history. 241 pages of regulations designed to cripple this industry. From your ability as a consumer to enjoy a free sample, to being able to go into your local brick and mortar and enjoy cigars and camaraderie with your friends, or even to enjoy a major cigar event across this land, all would come under threat with these regulations. Go to CigarRights.org. Join today. Be a part of the process. Become a cigar voter.